Hi, my name is Susan Kilpatrick and I'm a Senior Technical Support Engineer for the Toad family of products. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up team coding in Toad and integrate it with a third-party version control system. Team coding provides a convenient way to control database objects and scripts within a team environment through a single common interface. It can be linked to an existing VCS provider to manage full source control and revision history capabilities. Here's a list of version control systems that are supported by Toad for Oracle. Let's go ahead and set up team coding. To set up team coding in Toad, connect to the database which you want to control through team coding and select configuration from the team coding menu. If this is the first time installing team coding, you'll need to install the object, so click on the button here. You have the option to install to Toad Intelligence Central Server if you have that set up, or you can create a script that you can send to your DBA to set up the Toad schema and the objects. In this case, we're going to go ahead and install team coding to the database. You have the option to install the team coding objects into the schema that you're currently logged in as or into the Toad schema itself, which is what we would recommend. A TC admin role will be created and this should be granted to anyone who's intending to create the team project to be used by the rest of the team. If the Toad scheme itself doesn't exist, you'll be presented with the option to create it this time. And note that you will need DBA privileges to be able to do this. Just enter the password for the Toad schema. And then go ahead and create the objects. Team coding can be linked to an existing VCS provider to manage full source control and revision history capabilities. In this demonstration, we are going to link this to Team Foundation Server. Each VCS provider will have its own settings that you'll need to set up. So if you click on the button here to get these. For Team Foundation Server, you enter the server name port, SSL if you're using that. Keep this uh, internal client set. You can actually use an external client if you have Visual Studio set up, but we recommend using the internal. Initially, you uncheck the automatically login, but once you've got everything set up and you're happy with it, you can go ahead and check that. In the Advanced tab, if you have a custom collection, you would specify it here. Similarly, if you have a virtual, different virtual directory, you would also specify it here. There are various options that you can set in terms of locking. Click Apply. OK. Once you select a version control provider, other options will enable, which will allow you to specify your how your team will work with team coding and the version control system. You can hit F1 at any time to get context sensitive help on an explanation for these settings. Once you've specified your VCS provider and set up the server options that you'd like all your team coding users to adhere to, you can go ahead and create team projects, which allow you to define what database objects will be controlled by team coding. Click the team project, click a new team project, give it a name. Click on the ellipsis next to VCS project. At this point, you'll be presented with the Team Foundation server login. If you have any TFS workspaces already set up, you'll see them in the drop down here. Otherwise, you can create one if you click on new specify the name, the source control folder, and a, a local folder on your client. Click OK to log in. Then you'll be shown the projects that you can link to. Specify the project. 
you can actually create a new project also if you'd like. If you want to build a folder structure for all your different object types, you should select Use Subfolders. This will create a parent folder defaulted to what you're connected to, or if you remove that, it'll go to the project level that you've selected here. Now click the Add Schema button to add the schemas that you want under control. You'll be presented with a, a list of the schemas. You can select all schemas. This will literally be every schema that you've got in your database, or you can select multiple ones. In this case, we'll pick HR and Scott as an example. As you can see, these are the object types that can be under control within Toad. What we'll do is select just a couple for demonstration purposes. Procedure from HR and tables from Scott. Click OK. Click OK again. At this point, you are given the option to create the revisions. If you are doing multiple schemas with many objects, you may not want to go ahead and do that. This is time, but for demonstration purposes, I'll say yes. And here's a list of the procedures and tables that we're going to go under control. Click OK here. And Toad goes ahead and creates the revision. Click OK to complete the process. And if we go to Team Coding, Team Coding Manager, we'll see that the projects have been set up. And if we go over to the VCS tab and log in again, we'll see that on the Team Foundation server side, it's built the TC demo with an HR folder with underlying procedures and the Scott with underlying tables. This completes the setup process and you're now ready to check out and check in any objects that are under team coding control. To learn more about Toad for Oracle, visit support.quest.com.